If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. So taking our understanding further from Count Vectorizer, we now move on to TFID of Vectorizer. It's a little more advanced form compared to the Count Vectorizer. Let's understand what exactly does it do. So what is TF-IDF? TF-IDF is something that's derived from the term frequency and inverse document frequency. That's what TF and IDF stand for. And it's a popular technique in natural language processing for converting a collection of text documents into numerical feature vectors. It is often used in machine learning and information retrieval for tasks such as document classification, clustering, and text similarity. TF-IDF has two components as the name goes, TF, which is the term frequency, and idea of which is the inverse document frequency. Let's understand what these are. So TF, term frequency, measures how frequently a term or word appears in a document. It is calculated as the number of times a term appears in a document divided by the total number of terms in that document. So you'll see it like this. Number of times the term T, any general word token, appears in a document D, divided by the total number of terms in the document. So you'll get this as a ratio. So term frequency is calculated at each document's level. That's an important point to consider. Next, we talk about the inverse document frequency. Now, inverse document frequency is not calculated at each document level. It's calculated at the entire corpus level. You consider the entire text, whatever be the number of documents. So let's say we're talking about a restaurant's reviews and we will calculate term frequency for each review but you might have received 5,000 reviews over a period of 15 days for a popular restaurant, you'd say that inverse document frequency will be calculated at the level of those 5,000 reviews, not for each feedback. How does it work? So it measures the importance of a term in the entire collection of documents. It's calculated as the logarithm of the total number of documents divided by the number of documents containing the term. We can often add one to the denominator to avoid a zero division. If you do not have a word being used at all in a document, then you can add plus one, but it's not mandatory. It, it looks like this. So log of total number of documents in the corpus T divided by the number of documents containing term T. And plus one is an optional thing. For most of our illustrative calculations, we've not added plus one in the denominator, but it's, it's a specific choice that people can make. Now TF-IDF score that we finally get is actually a product of these TF and IDF values. So it's derived like this. So you first calculate the TF, then calculate the IDF, multiply them. Let's see this with the help of an example and it'll make more sense then. So let's say we have four sentences with us. First is children play football. Second is people watch football. Then we have people play cricket and football. And then we have kids enjoy watching cricket match and football match. Now you may often be relating your documents or text with some kind of an output. In this case, it may not be very meaningful like a sentiment thing, but we've just given it labels. Imagine you having inputs from a social media post and you want to conclude whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. Imagine a feedback coming in from a customer and you want to classify it as positive, negative, or neutral. So in such cases, you may have a target column, but we'll primarily be focusing on the documents piece, that particular column, which has these text entries. Now let's understand how do we put this to a structured form. So first of all, we have to convert our documents to tokens using count vectorizer. Now, the count vectorizer comes here because in order to go to TF-IDF, you have to have a count vectorizer in between first. That works internally. You don't have to apply it through the syntax, but that somewhere lies in the background. So let's just take our example and let's try to take the first sentence. So if we see first sentence was children play football. Now, in those four sentences, these are the words that were used. And this time we seem to have removed uh, different forms of the same word, like watching and watch, we put that as one. And children has been reduced to a root, let's say child and things like that. So some basic pre-processing you, you can imagine has been done. Now, children, that appears once in this sentence document D1. So that gets a value one. And then football appears once, that, that again appears here. And then play, that appears once. So you have the count vectorized representation of the first document, which is children play football. Now let's look at the second document. It was people watch football. So you have football as one, you have people as one, and you have watch as one. You have those three words marked here. Then the third sentence was people play cricket and football. Accordingly, you can mark people play cricket. Of course, we have not put and here because that would have been removed as a part of the stop words. So we put football here after that, and you have a one for football as well. 
Similarly, for the next document, you can validate it for yourself. Kids enjoy watching cricket match and football match. So there's another word match, which has appeared twice. And that's where the count here shows number two against that. This is a counting based system. So this is your count vectorized output of those four sentences. This is also called a document term matrix because the rows are the documents and the columns here are the tokens or terms as we see. So now on this count vectorized thing, let's calculate the term frequency. The term frequency, as we know, is a very simple calculation. Number of times a term T appears in a document divided by the total number of terms in the document. So if we take the first example, the word child appears once. And how many total words are there? Total words are three. Children play football, right? So three words, one by three, that's 0.33. Similarly, cricket, we've not used that in the first sentence. So it will be zero. Enjoy would again be zero. Football, again, would be one by three. And similarly, other words will be zero, except for play, which is again used once out of three total words. So we put a 0.33 for it. And then again, watch would be a zero because that's not used in the first sentence. This is how you do the calculation for TF for each document. It's specific to a document. Now, likewise, we can move to the second sentence, which was people watch football, right? So you have ones at the appropriate places and everywhere else you have a zero. If there was a word that was repeated multiple times, we would have put a count accordingly. Again, if we go about calculating the term frequency for the word child, it will be zero. Zero divided by the total number of words, which are three. So it will be zero for all the words which are not used. But for football, because it's one word out of total three choices, it will be a 0.33. Likewise, you can imagine for people, it will again be a 0.33 or 33%. And similarly, for watch, it will be 33%. So likewise, we can quickly do the third sentence. We have a total of four words here. So the denominator in terms of total number of words would change. So if we talk about the term frequency of child here, that will be zero. But if we talk about cricket, it will be one by four or 0.25. Similarly, football would be 0.25 and people would be 0.25 and play would again be 0.25. Similarly, watch would be zero because it doesn't appear in this sentence. Now, likewise, we can move to the document four. And by now you must be familiar that we need to count the total number of words in the document. In this case, that will be seven. And then for each word while calculating the term frequency, we just need to put its count divided by the total number of words. So for child, it'll be zero by seven, that'll be zero. For cricket, it'll be one by seven. And so on would be the case for enjoy football and kid, because these are all appearing once and one by seven will be approximately 0.142. Then we come to the word match and match would be double because it's used twice. So two by seven is approximately 0.285 and we have written it as 0.28. People again, it'll be zero. Play again, it'll be zero. For watch, it'll one more time be 0.142. So that's the term frequency calculation for the fourth document. Now here's the summary. Now this is what we have done for all the four documents so far. We have the summary available here. Done with the term frequency. Initialize with the count representation, convert it to term frequency. The values are becoming more continuous here, if you see. Counting was just a number, but this is becoming more continuous. Now let's talk about the inverse document frequency. Now remember, inverse document frequency has a specific formula, which is log of total number of documents. In our case, that's four. We have a total of four documents, divided by the number of documents that contain a word. How many times a word is contained is not important in each document whether a document contains a word or not is important. So you will count that. And now if we apply this calculation for the first sentence, so total number of documents are four. The word child is present in only one document. So log of four by one or log of four is 0 0.602. Similarly, cricket is present in two documents. So this will be log of two by one, which will be log two, that's 0 0.301, so on and so forth. IDF, remember, is a calculation considering all the documents. So it is not going to be different for different documents. It's one and the same for each term. That's the value that we're getting for the entire collection of documents. And now all we have to do is we have to put these together. TF multiplied by the IDF. Let me show you. So here is the TF table. Now here is the IDF that we just calculated. So to get the value for TF idea for child, let's say we have the occurrence of child in document D1. The value of TF is 0.33. We multiply it with 0 0.602, which is the IDF value. And you multiply these two values, you get 0 0.2. For, for rest of the documents, for child, the TF IDF value will be zero because the term frequency is zero. So if one of the term frequency or inverse document frequency or both go zero, obviously the product will be zero, right? Similarly, all these terms have been multiplied. So let's say we refer to the word match. 
match has a term frequency of 0.285. It has an IDF value of 0.602. When you multiply this, you'll get something like a 0.17. That's what we have as the value for match in document D4. This is how we do TF-IDF. So if you see, not all the input text had same number of words. There were places where we had three words. There were places we had four words. There were places where we had more words, up to seven words. This is the main challenge with the unstructured data. You don't have fixed size. How do we bring it to a format where it's kind of fixed in terms of rows and columns? So we do it like this. This TF-IDF table, if you see, is pretty much like the structured data that you're used to have seen. This talks about each column representing a term or a word here, and each row representing a document. Now this can be mapped to the target column. Let's say that was 1100, some kind of an output. We can try to predict that output using this as the input. These would behave like the independent features. And also notice you have a lot of zeros here as well. Why? Because not all the feedbacks will use all the words. That's why you end up getting a sparse output. That's pretty much about the TF-IDF. Next, we'll move to the hands-on piece.